Oh, for God's sake, I keep walking in loads of cow crap. I have to wash my boots when I get home. Hey everybody, I'm Dan Jackson and welcome to my channel, Dan the Engineer. Welcome to another weekly vlog. Um, in today's vlog, I'm going to be concentrating on fire safety in high rise buildings or, you know, fire safety in general. And also, contractors claiming to be parts of um, competent person schemes when they're not. Obviously, I'll be letting you know what I've been up to. So, again, another busy week. It's been a bit mental again, always is. Um, been doing a lot of paperwork, a lot of running around. Um, today I'm actually doing a survey for a 63 amp single phase supply in a rural location. You can probably see behind me. It's like, uh, I measured out earlier, I think it's like um, almost 600 metre run. i uh, be doing a cable calcs on that later and um, be interested to see what size cable <laughs> that's required. Um, it's going to be pretty big and uh, quite costly, but there we go. It's what the client needs, so that's what we're going to get, going to do a design on that later. Um, well, I'm talking about design. Anybody, um, I've spoke about the old 2391 City and Guild course, uh, the testing and inspection. I done my 2400 uh, design course. Um, it's been replaced by the 2396, I believe. I haven't done that course, but it's the, it's the, you know, the modern equivalent. That makes, makes me sound really old because it wasn't that long ago that I'd done a 2400, but anyway. Um, Probably the best course I've ever done, actually, um, just to give you more of an insight of um, design. It just gives you another perspective to look at installations. So any any guys that um, are sort of interested, I highly, highly recommend it. I've done mine in the evenings, so I gave up my time in the evenings. I know it's hard if you've got a young family and stuff like that, but if you're able to make the time, it's well beneficial to, um, to you and further your career. So highly recommend. So um, I'm just going to move a bit because uh, there's a there's a cow over there, so I'm just going to walk over this way. I've got my um, got my D walks all dirty as well. Can give them a bit of a clean later on. So anyway, um, I went to a a property. Now it, it's not a you know it's not like a 20 story tower block or anything. It's only a six story, and we was looking at um, solutions for fire safety because uh, basically there's a massive lack of it. Uh, I got called there um, specifically to look at the fire alarm and electrics really uh, to come up with sort of a, a safe solution and um, it's just bloody shocking if I'm honest. So the fire, it's got a fire alarm system um, but it's detectors only there's no call points um, this is social housing by the way so there's no call points and there's no sounders so when the fire alarm goes off um, the panel will alert and I can only presume it's for the AOV so there's an AOV that um, automatic opening vent that upon fire alarm activation it opens and then some doors are supposed to open so that um, smoke can escape out of the stairwell now I haven't seen the design documents for that I've asked for them but straight away um, I mean I'm not a fire risk assessor I know a little bit about fire risk. In my opinion, you've got a six story building. Now, it has got lift, but when a fire occurs, you can't use a lift, you have to walk down the stairs. Now, when on earth are you gonna know there's a fire if there's no sounders anywhere? You're not, um, unless literally your flat is on fire, but it could be too late by then because a the fire could spread out into the corridor. And then arguably you could say, well, if the corridor has a fire rating of one hour, well, that's all very fine, but if the, the fire was contained in a, a particular flat, say, you know, flat two or whatever, and let's say it was on the first floor, if, if there was a fire in there for one hour and the fire compartmentalization was okay, um, after an hour, let's say it's spread, you're still none the wiser if you're on the floor above. How, how would you know? Um, I mean, an hour is a long time for a fire to be going, so in theory you should and people should be alerted, but there's no way of warning anybody. So for, straight away, you know, I, I wanted to see the paperwork to see why why that is. But anyway, I mean, it doesn't hurt to have sounders if the fire alarm's going off. Um, but there we go. Um, there's no manual call points, and arguably you could say um, due to false alarms or whatever. But again, there's no manual way of alerting people. But in this scenario, it's, it's irrelevant anyway because there's no sounders. So even if there were call points, nobody would know anyway that there's a fire unless you could actually see it. And by then, when you're asleep, you know, had a few drinks at night in bed, it's not going to be good. 
So um, yeah, that's, that was a bit concerning. So anyway, it, it looks like the smoke detectors are for the AOV. So um, that's all fine, but the AOV wasn't working. So when you press the uh, manual override, nothing happens. It doesn't do what it's supposed to be doing. So that's failed as well. So that needs looking into. So these things can are all easily done, but they need to be designed properly, installed properly, commissioned, and also maintained because obviously things can go wrong um, after time. And that's why it's important to have a maintenance contractor who knows what they're doing. And also, um, it's like with fire alarms, for example, quite often when you're doing a maintenance a survey, uh, a service, a lot of people think that you're just you know, smoke testing what's there, but actually you're pointing out to the client if there's any changes or anything's happened. So if um, they've had a new um, room um, installed, you know, a new stub wall go up, you need to sort of point out that you may need additional detection for that room. Or if something changes, um, change of use of the room, for example, let's say they change it so there's increased chance of um, false alarms, you might want to consider changing to a heat. But, you know, the service engineer should be pointing these sort of things out. And um, what we also do, and uh, quite strong on it, is if we feel that anything's changed that isn't, you know, isn't just related with a fire alarm, but with you know fire safety electrical whatever we feel if we've spotted something we have a duty to tell our client because they may not know so even though it's not technically our job we just fire off an email or photos or whatever and say you know this is what we think um you know we recommend that you look into it surely that's a sensible thing so anyway um this uh this this building we was looking at um also looked in a riser because we got to look for cable routes going up and down for additional detectors and stuff like that and um it's got um uh intermittent coated bats so it's got the fire stopping but uh, around all the pipes and all the cables it's just normal feb foam so again no fire compartments you know they're, they're technically they're not rated at the, the ratings that they're supposed to be. Again, I haven't seen the documents, but this is between floors and stuff like that. I mean, someone's clearly done that, not knowing what they're doing. But um, I'm hearing a lot of, some clients um, are sort of saying to me, we, we need some sort of help with our fire barriers and stuff like that, which I can give advice on, point in the right direction. But they sort of say that it is the contractor's responsibility to um, make good any fire barriers um, that's all very well providing that their quote doesn't say that it's covered by somebody else or whatever obviously you've got to check paperwork on that but also what I think is important as a client remember as a client the client is a duty holder they are responsible for overseeing you can't just go to a contractor and say, do this, you're now responsible. It, it doesn't quite work like that. You still need to make sure that the person who is doing the work is competent and the work that's been done has been overseen and it's to a right standard. Now, you, you can do that in many ways. I mean, you can either use a reputable um, contractor. Now, that sometimes doesn't always work because you might think that they're, they're competent, but they're not. You can use third-party consultants because ultimately their interest is yours, not the contractors, whereas the contractors is obviously they want to do the job, get paid, go away. So there's a few sort of things you can do. But um, one person was telling me the other day that um, they said, oh, it's it's the, um, yes, yeah, the it was an electrician. So yeah, electrician's responsibility. And I spoke to the electrician and um, he, he never heard of fire barriers and stuff like that, which was quite worrying because um, he may have gone through but the truth is the building didn't even have any drawings right? so so the first thing that's supposed to happen is that you have your drawings drawn up with your fire compartments and you hand that to your contractor and say if you breach that wall or that you know whatever that barrier um, let us know and we'll restate, reinstate it and whose responsibility that is either you can get your own um, you know third party accredited company in to do it or the electrical contractor or whoever's doing the job they employ somebody to do it i mean ultimately it costs the client either way but it's got to be done because um the, quite often like we, we work in a lot of buildings and you could wire the whole building it'd be you know pretty big and you haven't even drilled a hole for any 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 walls you, you've just gone through voids and stuff like that so um 
yeah, it's, um, it's, it's quite alarming, the lack of knowledge on fire safety within buildings. It's no, there's no single um, solution, if you ask me, to some of these buildings. In fact, most buildings, I would say the majority of buildings have issues. Um, so, you know, it's not a case of, let's just throw in the sprinklers, that solves the problem. It doesn't. You know, let's throw a fire alarm in, it solves the problem. Again, it doesn't. You know, there are things out there that you hit that horse. Um, there are sort of um, solutions out there, but it, it's, it's everything. Emergency lighting, fire detection, fire stopping, um, you know, procedures and, and stuff like that. And um, there's obviously, we was talking to some tenants and in their block, they've got a stay put policy. Now again, fire evacuation sort of plans aren't my forte as such. Mine's more sort of fire alarm and detection. But they were confused by the stay put policy. They, they sort of thought that, oh, so if there's a fire, we just stay in our flat and that's that. No, that's, that's not true. You stay in your flat unless you feel you are at risk by smoke or fire, then you evacuate. Um, so the stay put is basically stay there until the fire rescue um, sort of tell you that you've got to leave or whatever and they come and rescue you because they can they contain the fire in um, a certain area but it's that vital second part of unless you feel you are at risk then evacuate so you know there's a lot of confusion a lot of education and after the sort of absolutely horrendous scenarios at Grenfell which is just an absolute diabolical tragedy all those people lost their lives people lost their homes and their possessions um, you know we need to learn but I don't think everybody should just have a quick oh let's just do this let's just do that and that's the problem it, it needs to be thought about and it needs to involve all the parties of you know emergency lighting fire electrical that's another one because bear in mind they say it was electrical um, fire in the beginning and come up with a solution amongst all of those it's not just one sort of area that's going to solve the problem like i hear a lot of people saying oh let's just throw sprinkler systems in you know not 100 percent convinced that is the absolute solution so there there we go thank you for watching my video guys um, if you haven't done so already please subscribe to my channel please give this a thumbs up and i look forward to the next one. Goodbye.